Hi, I'm Dr. Ahmed Kazmi, and today I'd like to speak about the subject of having to wait to see the doctor. Everyone has had the experience of having to wait, sometimes for a long time, to see their doctor. Am I right? Well, on behalf of doctors everywhere, I'd really like to apologize. I'm sorry about the wait, but I promise we don't do it on purpose. Part of me does think though, however, that waiting for things is a part of normal everyday life, and sometimes it's unavoidable. For example, we'd wait in the queue at the post office, we'd wait in the queue at the bank, and seeing a doctor for free on the NHS, I don't think is actually any different. Nonetheless, I've compiled a few tips, which I feel if everyone did, would mean that your trip to the GP is likely to be more timely and less stressful. Be realistic. The average GP consultation is only 10 minutes. That's enough time to usually discuss one, possibly two problems. So stockpiling your year's worth of problems and coming in to discuss all of them in one appointment isn't really realistic. Try self-treating first. Many conditions such as dandruff, dry skin, verrucas, warts, colds, can all be treated effectively at home by you, often with just a little bit of direction from the pharmacist. It's worth giving that a go before booking an appointment to see the doctor. Try to arrive on time. Being late has a genuine knock-on effect for other people booked into the clinic. Remember, the appointment is only for you. So asking the GP to see your children, parents, grandparents, lovers, ex-lovers, work colleagues, or anyone else who you might have chosen to bring with you to the doctors isn't really fair. Try to dress appropriately. If you think you're likely to be examined, for example, have your knee examined or your blood pressure taken, dress in a way that's going to mean that dressing and undressing is speedy. Make sure that the results are back. It's probably worth just ringing your doctor's surgery the day before you're coming in to discuss the result to make sure that it has arrived and available for the doctor to review. This will save the doctor doing a lot of chasing on the day. Request home visits early. If you think you or your relative might require a home visit, it's best to call this in first thing in the morning. This way the doctor can pace their day much better. Pee before seeing the doctor. That's a really important one. If you're going to come to discuss urinary symptoms, come into the consultation already with your sample ready. Tell the receptionist what's wrong. When the receptionist asks you why you need to see the doctor, she's not being prying or nosy. It's because there's lots of different people available for lots of different services. If they're aware what you need, they're more likely to be able to signpost you correctly. Be flexible. Emergencies crop up all of the time, and this is one of the reasons why the doctor often runs late. And small things like putting an extra pound in the parking meter, or not booking your GP appointment on the morning where you've got a major meeting coming up, are all ways to make your life a little bit less stressful. And lastly, I just gently request that everyone be compassionate. If you were feeling really unwell or very upset, you would like for the doctor to spend as much time with you as you needed. You never know what the person going in before you has just discussed. And also remember, your doctor is a human being with feelings who's trying their best. I really hope you found some of these tips useful and insightful, and I hope that your next visit to the GP is a little bit more zen.